Hi, VC. Uh, I hope you guys are having a awesome winter holiday. I hope you're getting plenty of relaxation and family and food and drink and all that fun stuff. Um, I've been doing a couple videos while I'm here back in Austin, and um, I don't know what order they're going to get uploaded in. Um, but I'm just taking the time while I'm with the larger part of my collection to um, do some videos. And, you know, I haven't really been buying records lately. Um, just not enough time or funds to do so. So um, I've been kind of exploring, uh, you know, the depths of my collection, seeing what videos I could do with that. I thought I'd use this opportunity to do some videos that highlight particular parts of my collection, you know, uh, collections by artists or composers. Um, you know, sections of the collection on a specific topic um, that are particularly beefy, so to speak. One part of my collection that I've always been pretty proud of is my uh, Led Zeppelin collection. I know a lot of people in the VC are very into Zeppelin. It's one of those classic rock bands that, you know, very, very popular, popular to collect. Um, everyone seems to be into them. Everyone's talking about pressings a lot. So I thought I would kind of walk you through what I have and um, based on the pressings that I have, what I consider, um, you know, the pressings to look for in terms of Led Zeppelin. Um, so I have all the Zeppelin albums from one up through uh, Physical Graffiti. I don't really care for any Zeppelin after that. I mean, I'm sure there's some good songs on some of those later albums, but um, to me, I, was never, I never felt justified in, in buying a copy on vinyl of those later albums. So for me, Led Zeppelin ends kind of at physical, gra physical graffiti. Um, so let's just get into it. The first record I have is a copy of Zeppelin 1, and this is the 180 gram Classic Records reissue. So those of you that don't know, Classic Records did the Zeppelin catalog in about, in the early 2000s, they first did 180 gram versions, I think as early as 1999. And then throughout the, the early to mid 2000s, they kept the 180 grams and they also did a version. They did some uh, pressings on 200 gram. Um, sonically, they're the same, pretty much. Um, it's just thicker vinyl, really. Um, so this is a 180 gram classic records pressing of Zeppelin 1. It sounds incredible. Um, the classic records pressings were the most recent pressing to use the master tape, use an all analog chain master tape. I think these were done by, uh, it doesn't say on here, but I'm pretty sure these were done by Bernie Grunman. Um, it's, it's been a while since I read about these. But yeah, these are pretty much, in my opinion, definitive. If you're gonna hunt for one, Ze one particular Zeppelin pressing, the classic records are are a good bet. The problem is, in the last couple of years, they've gotten pretty astronomical, um, to the point where it's not, it doesn't really make sense anymore. Um, you know, they're they're starting to break two hundred dollars a record, and um, most people just aren't going to pay that for records. I certainly wouldn't pay that for a record um, unless it's like my favorite record in the world. And these are great, but they're not my favorite records in the world. Um, but I enjoy them quite a bit. Uh, so I, it took me, you know, I, slowly but surely a couple years ago, I hunted these down and um, I, I never would pay the, the, uh, the buy it now eBay prices. So I would, you know, I would stay up late and try to do auctions on these or wait for something to pop up unexpectedly on Discogs. And uh, I don't know, I got pretty lucky, I feel like. So yeah, this sounds incredible. The Zeppelin 1, one and 2 the mastering for the classic records pressings are a little bright but not offensively so and then when they did when they did zep 3 they actually kind of toned it down and mellowed it out a bit and it's it sounds a little more balanced but um they they are a little bright um but the dynamics on these are incredible unlike anything i've ever heard the bass definitely the best bass of any zeppelin pressings even on on such an early recording like zep 1 um the only other copy of Zeppelin one I have is the recent, um, the recent Jimmy Page um, reissue. So these were oversaw by Jimmy Page. Um, they were remastered from high resolution scans of the master tape. So these are digital records. Um, they don't hold a candle to the classic records pressings. I got these because I got a deal. I got these for the first three records, and I got a deal on them. And I thought it'd be fun to compare them to the classic records pressings. And there really is no comparison. I don't listen to these at all. I keep them around for when someone comes over and they go, I don't know, what's, I don't really hear a difference between analog and digital. And I pull out these and I say, there's a 
huge difference. Um, these aren't bad. These aren't bad masterings. They're not bad pressings. Um, you know, you can get them now for $20, a record, and new, in a store. Um, but if you really want to be picky, there's just there's much better pressings out there than this, is what I'm trying to say. Not just the classic records pressing. There are better pressings. Here we go to Zeppelin II, which is my personal favorite Led Zeppelin record. I think it's, it's the best they ever put out. So it's a special record for me. I have this. This is... Dun, da, 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 a surprisingly minty original UK plum. Um, this is a special record to me. I do not have a classic records pressing of Zep 2. It's the only one that I'm missing a classic records pressing of. And uh, I, don't, I don't think I need it. Um, this original UK plum sounds great. No, it doesn't have the crazy bass and dynamics that the classic records do. But there's something about the tonality of this UK plum that's that sounds so natural and open, and the guitars just kind of cut through. The guitar tone is is really realistic and live. Um, I, I enjoy this pressing, and when I want crazy bass and slam and you know intensity, um, I'll turn to this, which is probably the one I play the most, and this is the Mofi pressing of Zeppelin II. Um, this is a gem. I, this is one of the most ridiculous finds I've ever had. This is, I mean, there's a, there's a, some lower seam damage on, on this pressing, so the jacket isn't perfect, but the record's mint. I got this, uh, uh, I got this for $50, and anyone that's seen the Discogs prices of this record knows it regularly sells for about $150, almost $200 for a clean copy, which this is. Um... I have no idea why it was $50, but um, I didn't ask questions. I paid the man, got a uh, really rare pressing of Zep 2, and uh, it's this is the one I play the most. This is um, a really fun pressing. Mastered by Stan, uh, Stan Ricker. You know, some people say it has a smiley face EQ, and definitely some of the older MoFi's do kind of have uh, accentuated bass and treble. However, it's not as jarring on this album. It doesn't sound artificial on this on this pressing. It's, it sounds pretty good to my ears on my system. To other people's ears on other people's systems, they may not like it. I, I enjoy it. I enjoy the MoFi pressing. And, um, oh, before I had the MoFi pressing, actually my favorite pressing was this. This is a Japanese pressing that was done in the early 90s. It was the last Japanese pressing. The moniker on this one is uh, the AMJY series. Uh, so it's like AMJY and then, and then the serial number. Um, so these were done in Japan in the early 90s from what I believe to be the, the original master tape. And a lot of people talk about Japanese pressings of rock music and especially Japanese pressings of, of Led Zeppelin um, because for a long time, you know, before the classic records pressings came out, the Japanese pressings were considered the audiophile pressings of these albums. I don't know if I would agree with that, but... Um, and a lot of the Japanese pressings that you're going to see are the 70s Warner Pioneer pressings, which are okay. They're all right. Um, these early 90s Japanese AMJY pressings are a hell of a lot better than any other Japanese pressing I've heard. Much better dynamics much better natural tonality. They're not as, they're not as ear shatteringly bright. Um, there, there's a real analogness to these that, you know, kind of gets overwhelmed by the harshness of the earlier Japanese pressings. You know, these can be had, um, depending on which record it is, you can get these if you're careful for $50, $60. Um, they're not crazy expensive. At least they weren't uh, a couple years ago, maybe they are now, but um, so if you can't find an affordable classic records pressing, you can't find a clean. I mean, buying buying the UK plums is always really risky, um, just because you rarely ever come across one in person, so you have to trust someone online. And for old rock records, that's really hard. Um, I've sent a lot of records back because of bad grading. Um, so. You know, if you're looking for a good-sounding 
Zeppelin pressing that's clean, that's, you know, is going to be clean because the Japanese take impeccable care of their records and the Japanese vinyl's quieter. Um, these are not a bad option. I would certainly rather have this than the recent Jimmy Page remasters. Um, it's not as good as the MoFi. It's arguably not as good as the UK Plum. But these are solid. These are really solid and affordable solutions to having a really good copy of a Zeppelin record. So keep an eye out for these. I do have the Jimmy Page remaster. Um, on this one especially, it's not great. It, it really isn't. But um, I don't know. It's, it's better than, than the later U.S. pressings. Not the, not the Robert Ludwig original, you know, hot cut, but like the common U.S. pressings I would rather listen to this than one of the common U.S. pressings. Um, I'm just assuming that most of you out there who are into Zeppelin and record collecting are kind of aware of the famous or infamous RL cut of Zeppelin II. Um, I've never heard one, and uh, I, uh, I've only encountered one in the wild once, and it was being bought by the person next to me. I didn't find it. The person next to me found one at a record fair. I have no idea what condition it was in. Most of the time, they're not in great condition. Um, you know, you'll, you can pay... The Robert Ludwig hot cuts of Zeppelin II, you know, expect to pay $200, and it... Like, expect to pay $200 for, like, something graded VG. Like, expect to pay $200 for a really crackly, noisy record. I To me, I, I, no, I'm good. I have the MoFi, I have the Plum, I'm good. For those of you that aren't familiar with the story, so Robert Ludwig was the original mastering engineer for uh, Led Zeppelin II. He was also the mastering engineer for um, Houses of the Holy. So when Robert Ludwig, when Robert Ludwig mastered and cut uh, Led Zeppelin II, he cut a really, really hot cut. Um, tons of bass and dynamics and just an awesome sounding record, a really like kick you in the chest record. And um, they released it with his cut very briefly. And one of the, uh, I mean, it, like it got a very limited release with that, that cut. And one of the record executives took home the record. The story goes, I don't know how accurate this is, but the story goes one of the record executives took home the record to play on his daughter's kitty turntable and it skipped. So he ordered a recut of it with, you know, um, squash dynamics, squashed bass, you know, much, much smaller grooves to be able to be played on these toy turntables that couldn't track for shit. Not that in 1969, not that a ton of turntables were that great at tracking anyway. The good turntables were a couple years off. But that's how the story goes. So um, this hot cut of, of Led Zeppelin II is very rare, very hard to find. They, they, you know, because they released a small number of them and then it got recalled and the remaining copies got, I, I would assume, destroyed. Or something like that. So they're very hard to find and they're, they're kind of legendary. But you know what? For me, it's not worth the effort. I have three really great sounding copies of this record. Someday I may hear an RL Led Zeppelin II. And maybe it will change my mind, but I, I think I'm all right. I think I'm good. So we're moving to Led Zeppelin III. This is the 200 gram classic records pressing of Zeppelin III. And it has the uh, working wheel. You can see working wheel, which is really cool. Let's do that spindle hole there. Um, this is just a really, really well done packaging by Classic Records, and the record sounds amazing. They were able to get just the right tonality on this, so where it wasn't as bright as, as Zep 1 and 2. It's just a beautiful sounding record, because, um, you know, Immigrant Song was never that well of recorded of a song, um, so that's not an audiophile cut, but like some of the acoustic guitar stuff on here can sound really good when it's done well on a good pressing on a good system. And the, this is the last Jimmy Page remaster that I have. This is the Jimmy Page remaster of Zeppelin III. Again, I bought three of these as a, as a package deal um, for, you know, it ended up being like $12 a record because I bought all three of them. 
I don't play these. I don't like them. I leave them here for comparisons um, to be like, hey, this is digital versus analog because I think it's a really great example. Okay, now we get to Zeppelin IV, which is the, the big one. Um, I got a couple... Wow, I have a lot of pressings of this record, actually. So, the first one we encounter is, of course, again, an original UK plum, which sounds really awesome. It was my favorite pressing of this record until I got the classic records version. Um, this classic records version sounds really kick-ass, but the, the UK plum is really nice, too that over there and here we've got one of my only uh, US Zeppelin pressings this is a US pressing of Zepp 4 this is a Porky Peco cut it's got Porky on one side in the dead wax and Peco Pelham something like that on the other side it's just um, the mastering engineer and where it was pressed and where it was cut at um, I'm not that nerdy into like US pressing matrices, um, matrices. So I don't exactly remember the really important significance of this cut, but I just know that a lot of people consider this to be the best U.S. cut of this album, the Porky Pecco. Um, but to be honest, I don't listen to that one that much. And uh, this is a, I'm pretty sure this is the Japanese pressing. Yeah, this is a... This is the um, 70s Warner Pioneer version of this record that I have. It's okay. It's not great. Um, I've been contemplating whether I should sell this. I think, I think I'm going to sell this eventually. It's, it's good, but it's, it doesn't hold a candle to some of these other versions. I've, I've never been a... You know, the, the 70s Warner Pioneer Japanese pressings of, of Zeppelin records, they're all right if you can get them for like $20, maybe... $30 or less, but um, to me they're not like pressings to hunt after. And lastly, um, this is the most recent and probably final edition to my record collection. I got this in Montreal about two years ago at Out 33 Tour. Um, this is the classic records pressing of Zeppelin IV. This thing is awesome. This is beautiful. This is the 200 gram version. Incredible, incredible pressing. Uh, now we move into, I don't know, what is, I guess, my second favorite Zeppelin album after two is Houses of the Holy. And, uh, the first one we got here, this is, I don't remember where I got this, but I got it pretty cheap somewhere. This is a German pressing of, uh, Houses of the Holy. It's cool. It's got some nice, like, tubey mellowness to it. It's, it's just a really mellow pressing, and, uh, the, the, uh, the j texture on the jacket is actually quite a bit nicer than, like, original U.S. pressings. It's, it's kind of glossy. So, um, yeah, not a bad pressing to keep around. And uh, here we have a Warner Pioneer pressing of Houses of the Holy that, to my ears, actually sounds really good. Uh, yeah, the Warner Pioneer got the OB. Um, you know, for the other for my, the other Zeppelin records, I'm not a huge fan of the Warner Pioneer records, but Houses of the Holy is kind of a dark sounding record, and especially my favorite song, which is No Quarter. You know, like some of the, some of the tracks on here can sound a little bit bright on this pressing, but to my ears, no quarter on this pressing, which is no quarter, probably my favorite Zeppelin song. No quarter on this on this pressing sounds awesome. The added little little brightness and and peaked up treble on this pressing is just is what that song needed. It it sounds really haunting and really creepy, and when that when that guitar riff comes in, um, that kind of like sweeping guitar riff after the intro, it just works. It works. Not to say that, um, not to say that the classic records is chopped liver. Um, I overall, if I was going to put on one to listen to, I'd probably listen to the classic records. Uh, this is the 200 gram, I believe. But um, that Warner Pioneer is pretty cool. Um, for a while, I did have a Robert Ludwig cut of this record, a U.S. RL pressing, which are sought after and um, and considered very good sounding. The problem is it, mine was really noisy, and um, I, I just don't want to listen to a record with a ton of, of ticks and clicks in it. Um, 
someday I'll probably get a better condition RL pressing, but yeah, I like this one. Uh, we're coming to the end. So we have physical graffiti here and this is the, um, another AMJY early nineties Japanese pressing that sounds incredible. Um, this one does not have the OB, but it, it is an, an AMJY pressing. Um, this is very nice, but I still prefer the classic records pressing, which is again, just really, really, it has that special something. It was just, it was just mastered to be honest, perfectly. Bernie Grunman did a great job with this. So that's it guys. That's my, uh, that's my Zeppelin record collection. Um, I'm pretty proud of it. It's, it's one of the better artist collections in my stack of records. And, um, some of these records sound really good. Um, I know people don't generally think of Led Zeppelin as an audiophile band, but um, to, to me, to me, they are. Some of these records are reference quality, in my opinion, um, if you have the right pressing, which is what I've tried to do. So what pressings of these Led Zeppelin records do you guys have? What pressings do you like? Um, have you guys had the, had the opportunity to do a pressing comparison? Um, let me know what you think down in the comments and, uh, like, and subscribe and keep being awesome. Um, you guys are great. So, uh, cheers, VC.